So I'm just back from an assignment in Ho Chi Minh City for the New York Times shooting a travel story. I can't really talk about the focus of that story out because this video will be out before my images are published. But I'll share that with you guys later on Instagram and maybe do an episode about that shoot because it was really interesting. And on the flight back, I was editing and I needed a break from editing. <laughs> I had my laptop out and I was just thinking like, oh, you know what I should do? I should sort of write down my unwritten rules that I sort of apply to all my photo shoots or all my assignments. So I sort of, sort of have these like unwritten rules and today I'm gonna write them or today I'm gonna voice them <laughs> and tell you guys about them. Before we get into that, I'd just like to thank the sponsor for this episode, which is Wotencraft Bags. I've been using Wotencraft Bags for almost 10 years now. I've visited their factory. I've talked to the owners, the designers, and they're just really cool people, but more importantly, they make incredible bags. They really do balance the style and practicality that most bag companies fail to achieve with their sort of like ballistic nylon. And on this shoot that I just went on, I brought my Pilot Series 10 liter bag down to Ho Chi Minh City, have my Leica SL2S, my 135, my 50, my 21, and my 35 in there. And I also have my Leica M10D as well. It just kind of fit everything perfectly. And those two modular front pockets are very useful for my travel, for taking extra things like chargers and things like that, that I can take them off when I go out and shoot because I don't need to carry all that stuff when I'm actually shooting, but I need it for the flight down there. Anyway, check them out. I've got an affiliate link in the description box below. So my first rule is to never, ever, ever, ever under any circumstance miss a sunrise or a sunset, no matter what. And I actually planned my entire trip around maximizing the amount of sunrises and sunsets that I'm gonna capture. So why you ask? Well, the main reason, the obvious reason is I wanna put myself in the best position to capture as many shots as I can in beautiful, dramatic light. And that's gonna happen the first hour of the day, and it's gonna happen the last hour of the day. But there's more to that as well. Another reason is that I like to get a jump start on the day, so I like to be up early. It puts me in the right mindset. When I start capturing good pictures, it puts me in a good mood. It gives me the energy to capture even more pictures and be more creative. It's just kinda of how it works for me. And you might say, what if you check the forecast and the weather looks bad, or you wake up and the weather's not great? Do you still go out? Yes, I do, because I like to get a jump start on the day. Another thing is, is that a lot of times my editors will look at meta data and say like, oh man, he was shooting at like 5.30 in the morning. So you know, it helps my reputation. It shows I have a good work ethic. Another reason is too, like the people that work with you, it could be assistants, fixers, or it could be the subject that you're photographing. People appreciate that. People appreciate that you care about your job, that you're passionate about your job, and when you buy in, so does everyone else around you. So I never, ever, ever miss a sunrise or a sunset. The next rule I have is to plan my caffeine intake. I'm someone that is very reliant on caffeine. I don't like to admit that, but I am. So no matter where I am in the world, I plan accordingly. So if I'm up at sunrise, well not if, when I'm up at sunrise, I know the hotel's probably not gonna have anything open. I know the city's not gonna have anything open at 5.30 for me to get a coffee, so I stay in a room that has an espresso maker, and if they don't have that, I plan accordingly. I might buy some canned coffee the day before and put it in the fridge, or if I'm somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, like I was when I was shooting the Northern White Rhinos in Central Kenya, I actually brought my own little AeroPress thing so I could have it ready early in the morning, because again, I need to be active. I need everything to be functioning creatively in my mind. I need the energy early in the morning. I need to like hit the ground running so I have the right energy when I need to be my most creative version of myself. The next piece of advice is not so sexy, but it's extremely important, is that I'm very diligent about my backup system. So I back up twice a day. Typically, if I have a lunch break, I'll back Back up then and I back up at the end of the day no matter what I never even if I finish really late I don't say oh, I'll just do the card in the morning or I have extra space on the card tomorrow I'll just shoot and then back everything up tomorrow no I'm diligent about that anytime I have an opportunity to back up sometimes there's circumstances where during lunchtime there's no opportunity to back up I get that but at a minimum I back up every single day at the end of the day I also look at my take at the end of the day just to make sure there's no problems with the files it also gives me an idea of what I've shot so far and what I might need to capture to complete my assignment or complete my story and so I back everything up in three different locations. If it's a shoot for more than one day, then every single day I keep one of those hard drives on me in my camera bag at all times. So if something happens at the hotel, my room's robbed, there's a fire or something like that, I haven't lost what I've shot so far. It might seem like overkill, but really, I mean, if you had to go back and reshoot something, and sometimes there's no opportunity to do that. Sometimes things just happen once, you don't have a chance. So back up twice a day, back up on three hard drives, look at my files every single day, and then I keep my hard drive separately when I'm working throughout the day and then when I travel back as well. So I have a hard drive on maybe my check-in bag and one on my carry-on. And piggybacking off of my rule about backing everything up, I also have backups of everything. I always travel with two cameras, multiple lenses, multiple chargers for things, multiple wires for things. Basically, I want two of everything. So if something goes wrong, 
I'm covered. If I'm in a remote area, I'm covered. A charger breaks and I can't charge for a couple of days and I'm in the middle of central Kenya, I'm in trouble. It's not like they're going to have a Leica shop nearby where I can buy a second charger. So two of everything. It seems like overkill. It's more stuff to pack. I like to pack in a very minimalistic way. However, having two of everything will save you. Just one time is all it takes to sort of ruin a photo shoot. The next rule is I always pack everything, my camera equipment, all my clothes and everything the day before. And I always charge everything the day before. I do everything at home on my home turf, using my own power outlets, using my own system. And then that also saves me if you woke up late in the morning or something went wrong, you, you're covered. Everything's packed and ready to go the night before. Then my next rule is I always write down all my necessary information separately on a notepad. I'm gonna need a notepad anyways for doing captions. I know this might seem a little bit outdated with phones and things, but just let's say for example, you're away traveling and you lose your phones. It's important to have your hotel information written down, your subjects information, your locations that you need to photograph, uh, contacts of people that you need, flight information, all pertinent information that if you were to lose your phone that you're still covered. And speaking of being covered, another thing I also do as well is you hide or stash an extra credit card, an extra copy of my passport, and some extra cash that will get me by for the rest of the shoot, I have another subset of everything hidden away somewhere. I'm not gonna tell you where. A next rule of mine is to shoot in RAW and shoot at the highest possible resolution that my camera can do. I know sometimes it's tempting to shoot in lower resolution so you can get more shots and less space backing up on hard drives, but as a professional photographer, I never know where my image is gonna be used. I could shoot something for an editorial assignment Right, like even my Northern White Rhino picture, I shot that for personal work. I didn't necessarily need a high resolution image. Could have shot it in like medium JPEG. However, then later on, like I bought that image and used it in a global ad campaign. So I'm happy that I shot it in its highest resolution and in RAW so that it would print really nicely. You know, so I just, as a professional, I just always do that. It's a good habit to be in shoot in RAW. You'll have more latitude later on. It might seem like you're just capturing an image for just yourself or personally, but you never know where things are gonna go. You never know who's gonna be interested in your image and how they're gonna be interested in using it. So to have the RAW file, it's a lot of extra space. I understand that, but for me, it makes sense. The thing I do is to always get the window seat on the plane, the window seat on the bus, sit by the window in the car, just because you never know when an opportunity is gonna present itself to capture an image. So piggybacking off of that, I always wear my camera. Once I'm in shooting mode, I wear my camera because if I'm on the plane and I'm flying in, like this actually happened to me. I was flying in for one of my first major assignments about palm oil in Malaysia. And as I was flying into Malaysia, I flew over a giant palm oil plantation and I had my camera on me and I had the window seat and I got some nice aerial shots. I didn't have a budget for a helicopter. Drones weren't a big thing back then. And actually my editor published one of those images and I think they appreciated that I was like ready to go. It's easy to just sort of lose focus to zone out on a plane. It's easy to lose focus, zone out on a taxi ride, a bus ride or wherever on a train ride. But there's opportunities there to make images and they're gonna present themselves. And if your camera's tucked away in your bag and if you, or if you don't have the window seat, you're not gonna capture those images. Another rule that I'm strict about is I don't let other people handle my camera gear. I know sometimes it's easy to let your guard down and like give your, like you have a roller bag with all your equipment in it and the taxi driver wants to put it in the back seat or you get to the hotel and they wanna wheel it up or take it up to your room because it looks like a piece of luggage. I just don't let them handle it. Now it's not just because I'm afraid that someone might steal something, but there's just a lot of things to that. I don't want someone like, they don't know that it's fragile. You might say that it's fragile, but then someone else handles it and then they toss it somewhere and then your lenses break. Just don't want that. I also don't want people knowing I have expensive equipment in that bag. So I just sort of, I go through that awkward battle where they're like, oh, let me take your luggage. So I'm like, no, let me take your luggage. No. And then I'm like, no, you're not touching my luggage. I know it's just the thing. I don't let taxi drivers handle my bags. I don't let hotel staff handle it. I'm sure they could do a great job. I just, if it's going to break, I want it to be my fault, not someone else's. And the last little rule that I do is I typically, before I introduce who I am or when I'm shooting, just in case people say no when I'm on assignment, I typically get a couple safety shots first with, before I ask permission. So if I'm at a restaurant, for example, and that's part of my story, I need to get some shots. I might order some food, put the food by the window, get some nice shots of the food, try to get some sneaky shots of ambiance at the restaurant, people working, things like that. If I need access to the chef or I need access to another area so I can get a different shot or different perspective, then I might go introduce myself, say who I'm working for and say what I'm trying to accomplish and then hopefully they give me access. But if I do that and they say no and they're not interested, which does happen sometimes, I'm at least covered and I have a couple shots before they sort of kick me out and it gets awkward. Those are just some of my rules as an assignment photographer that I live by. You don't have to apply all these to what you do, but I think a lot of them can be helpful to improving your photography and they're just things that I, they might seem like overkill, but they've worked for me. I think it's a reason why my editors come back and hire me more often. It's a reason why I'm not just pigeonholed to like shooting in the city that I live in, why they've flown me to other cities and other countries to capture these stories 
because I think I'm very strict about these rules and they're very helpful for me telling a more complete story and just overall getting better images and being a better photographer. Hope this was helpful for you guys today. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. I do my best to answer all of your questions. Don't forget to check out my online store at Ask Mott by Justin Mott. I've got a brand new online store with a bunch of different products, one-on-one -on -one classes, mentorship program, business classes that my wife does. I've also got a few slots left for my Northern Vietnam Photography Workshop in March. It's an incredible experience. You'll absolutely love it. It'll be the trip of a lifetime, experience of a lifetime. It's a very intimate, very hands-on workshop. I'm there shooting right with you. I'm there coaching you and teaching you right there on the spot. I promise you. It'll be the trip of a lifetime. So check that out. All that information is in the description box below. Don't forget to check out my friends over at Wotencraft if it's time for you to get another camera bag, which is always kind of time to get another camera bag, right? Anyway, check them out. I've got an affiliate link in the description box below. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to have a wonderful day.